Hey, this is Jay with the Bellingham Real Estate Company and Live Bellingham Now, and welcome to our nonprofit November series. Today, we're taking a look at Paper Whale, a local arts nonprofit. Their mission is to cultivate community in an evolving program of multi sensory events to inspire and creatively activate placemaking. You might know them through their events Fire and Story, the Noisy Waters Mural Festival, and their Artist Speaker Series. Here to talk about their impact is their executive director and co founder, Nick Hartrick. My name is Nick Hartrick. I'm the executive director and co-founder of Paper Whale. Paper Whale is a cultural accelerator in Bellingham, Washington. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Paper Whale's mission is to cultivate community in an evolving program of multi-sensory events to inspire and creatively activate place. So Paper Whale started as a, a think tank to create ideas for the waterfront. You know, it's like a, a, an evolving concrete rock parking lot, basically. And a long-term vision there. And the Paper Whale's name, uh, the paper in Paper Whale's name comes from this former pulp and paper mill plant. That was like our first uh, area to activate. Also, like paper is uh, malleable, it's easily, it's temporary. You can shape it into origami, you can make art out of it, but temporary, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the whale comes from the Lummi um, iconography. The blue whale represents the protector, and we're working to preserve arts and culture in Bellingham. So events really is like where this whole thing started. Paper Whale started as a, a think tank, as I said, and the idea was to just generate a bunch of creative, temporary, waterfront installations that will bring people to activate the space. And events are a great temporary way to do that. You can bring 8,000 people to a space over three or four days and uh, inspire connection, create a sense of community that I think is something we hold really strong as a value in Bellingham, right? Paper Whale started with a speaker series and it's like a monthly TEDx talk that we still have current today, and it's usually the first Wednesday of every month. It really driving at developing a creative class for Bellingham. There are a lot of storytellers and fabricators and artists and architects and designers and poets and you know, visionaries that all live in Bellingham, but maybe their work happens outside of the community. So one thing I had heard for years is, where do the creatives in Bellingham meet? Like, where is that hub? So uh, that kind of struck right in line, the confluence of how Paper Whale was born. So I, I like to think and, and really translate the message that Paper Whale is uh, more of a cultural accelerator than an arts organization. And so the difference is, or really because we have a lot of like very successful arts organizations in Bellingham. And so what sets us apart is really trying to get at the root of what is cultural about Bellingham. Like what is our identifiable cultural lens that people look at this community and take away that isn't recreation, which is awesome, right? Like big fan of recreating that is beyond our geographic proximity to being close to the bay and close to the mountains, which also are two aspects of living here that I love. But outside of uh, our geographic and our recreational based kind of ethos as a community, what is it that defines Bellingham? What, what is it that makes us super unique? I feel like Bellingham is uh, changing. It's an evolving community. I mean, it's, it's becoming a desirable place for people to move to, and that is not going to stop, right? So our vision at Paper Whale is let's make this the best possible community that it can be. 
and frankly, I believe it's, uh, a, I might get some crap for this, but like, I feel like Mellingham's a little sleepy to, uh, to realize its potential. And I say that coming through a cultural lens, right? Like we're very fortunate here to have a strong indigenous community with both Coast Salish, Lummi and Nooksack peoples, the salmon people. And like, you don't see that in a lot of cities across North America, especially as you get further into the East Coast. We brought an artist here from Brooklyn for the Noisy Waters Mural Festival and her reflection of this community, she said, I, I came to Bellingham, I didn't even look it up on a map, I thought it was inland, I didn't know it was even on the coast, and I am blown away by the beauty of this place. She, her words, the most beautiful place I've ever been to. And uh, the mural festival integrates this, this aspect of honoring our Coast Salish tribes and indigenous artists here that really make this place unique. And the gal from Brooklyn's comment was, we don't see any indigenous artists, let alone live painting next to us. I think that's really relevant. I don't know, it's totally relevant, but I don't know that it's like hyper visible in our community, uh, Coast Salish art form. So that's uh, something that we try to work with and, and honor in our work. The name Noisy Waters for the Noisy Waters Mural Festival comes from the literal translation of Watcom. Quatquam in uh, Lactamesh language, the Lummi people, literally translates to noisy water. So we feel like it would an honor to be able to identify with this place. So events launched, as I said, the Noisy Waters Mural Festival. And the Mural Festival was a way to showcase international artists from all over the world to come to Bellingham to paint live for the public for free for three days and the community votes on the type of artists that they want to see reflected uh, in our community and paper whale brokers large scale walls for them and the community votes and we scale that artist's art form on walls downtown. So last year, the first year of the mural festival, resulted in six walls being painted in, in downtown Bellingham and that's, that's pretty significant. The question that we address is, you know, how does this support local artists? And so we really carve out a way to integrate local art before the festival, leading up to the festival, ramp of events, block parties, downtown sounds. But the goal is to to raise the caliber of visual diversity in our community. And I liken that to like, if Bellingham was only, if you only went out to see music in Bellingham and it was only local bands, like that would be great. And we would never see any touring acts that come through and uh, we wouldn't be, you know, it's just a, t a completely foreign topic. So I liken that to art form and murals is that like we need a rotating sense of artists and creative thinkers that sh that come from different places and when you see some of this artwork that showcases the noisy waters it'll be very reflective of like a east coast style of art or a, like a denver based style of art or a bay area in san francisco style of art and they take their inspiration from bellingham and integrate that art form on large scale walls and it's it's beautiful to see the transformation. Talk about fire and story. Yeah. Okay, so our signature uh, winter off-season event is uh, called Fire and Story. And this event is a gathering of folk, light, and lore. And if you haven't been, it's in January 2025. We, this will be our second year, and Fire and Story is really a unique cultural experience for Bellingham, and it's a, I think it's like a, I think of it as a mashup of lots of cultural elements that exist here, and we build a container for it on the waterfront with beautiful hand-sculpted fabricated fire pits. Gathering around fire is like an ancient tradition, and I think it, Today, most people gather around fire as their central heat source in their home or a backyard gathering with friends, but it's unusual for thousands of people to gather around fire together just across the Pacific Northwest or even internationally that I know of. So what we're really creating is a, a cultural signature event in the off season. And off season events come with a lot of challenges, right? It's 
it's uh, difficult to prepare for rain and wind and snow. Hey, like if we got snow last year, that was that was in the dream uh, initially when we thought it up eight months before. But I believe, and I know Bellingham residents here and visitors in this area are resilient. We've all got the gear, you've got the Gore-Tex. The thing people are most concerned is about being warm and that's what the fires are for, so. Uh, really excited to see the evolution of that event happen uh, in January uh, 23rd through the 25th. What it looks like to volunteer with Paper Will, uh, we have so many opportunities for people to connect and showcase their creative style. I mean, we have a, a lot of needs functionally as an organization, but I think where we're best suited is bringing the community together to help cultivate and build temporary art installations in the community is one way to connect and to volunteer. At our events, we have lots of volunteer roles. So if you're inspired about helping shape the future of what this community looks like and you're inspired by our events, we have a place for you. Um, and that takes on a variety of really fun roles, so. You know, this, this like term art, I, I really, I'm not an artist, okay? And I run a arts and culture organization in town. And my art form, and I, I would ask like anybody watching this to identify with like, what is art to me? Because when I think of art, uh, I used to think of it as like, oh, there's a painting on the wall, or like, hey, this is art behind us, it's photography. And it's, it's, it's analog, right? It's like a, a piece that hangs on the wall. That's how I used to think about art until I went to the Academia in Florence, Italy. And if you've been to see Michelangelo's David sculpture, like that transformed my thinking about what art could be. And it's a, another static analog thing, but I started thinking about art in a completely different way and my art form is curating spaces for people to connect. So that's how I identify with it. But art is a universal language that connects all of us deeply to the human experience. It's like that's the unique thing about our species that we create is we're creating art for the sake of art. And so we use it purely as a tool to inspire people to connect. So if you're a, a fabricator at All-American Marine, you know, and you, we have a space for you to come in. If you're a pipe fitter in Ferndale, we have a space for you. If you're a, uh, a student at Western Washington University, there's a space for you. There's like no boundaries to who we're trying to connect on any political or economic scale. It's, uh, it's highly inclusive. The best way this community can support Paper Will is by showing up and attending one of our events. And that's the best way because you are showing your support for a, a, a vision for Bellingham that I think resonates with a lot of people that are excited about change and want to be invested in how that change takes shape. By supporting us, you support our sponsors. And we're supported by a lot of local businesses and the city of Bellingham supports us and the Port of Bellingham supports us and Whatcom County and Bellingham Tourism supports us and lots of local businesses. So when you support us, you're supporting the local businesses that care about making this future resilient for Bellingham. Why is art important to a community? I mean, this kind of goes back to what I was saying around like, what's the cultural, significant cultural identity or character about this place? So when I say Portland, Oregon, like something in your body goes to Portland, whether you visited there at any point in time, but like Portland has a unique sense of place. I can say Seattle, Washington, you can go to a place and that could just be like the Space Needle or Pioneer Square or driving on the old viaduct, like whatever your sensory experience is to that place brings you there. When I say New Orleans, if you've been there, like you'll have a strong sense of a cultural uh, connection to that place. Barcelona, Spain, like if you start jumping to these international cities, Mexico City, uh, Berlin, right? Like there is something unique to that that makes that place significantly unique to any other place and so i'm really driving at at 
art and culture raising that bar in Bellingham being a, a way that can enhance the creative class here in Bellingham, drawing more creatives to this city, more murals, yes, for sure. More placemaking opportunities to make this uh, an interactive and activated city, for sure. Like that's gonna drive economic influence. It's gonna make our local businesses stronger, especially in our downtown core. Really what this whole thing, Paper Whale is all about is connection. And we wanna build a really strong, healthy, through sense of community, and I know there's a lot of lonely people out there. Bellingham is not a lonely place, as you know. We want to find a unique way to bring people together. And in doing that, you create a resilient community. This whole project started in collaboration with Gretchen Leggett, who many of you know as kind of Bellingham's most prolific muralist, and her artwork is everywhere. Started with her and I tackling the largest mural in Washington State, which is on the side of the Incogen building down on Cornwall Avenue near Glass Beach. It's 540 feet wide. It, um, this is the largest mural in the state, and I think if that scale of the project can be completed uh, in Bellingham, with just two regular people who have a big dream, then I'm really excited to see what can happen with like a dedicated organization that's committed to this. And so in 2025, we've got some large scale artwork that's coming down the road, not only from the prize walls from the, this year's mural festival that will be installed in 2025, just ahead of the Noisy Waters Mural Festival in August, because you can't paint in the winter, you can't paint in November, December. Through a partnership with the city of Bellingham and their downtown activation grant, beautification project, uh, Paper Will will be leading a large mural under the 253 Lakeway exit underpass. So if you're coming from Lakeway from Galbraith Mountain or Whole Foods area into downtown, that iconic and heavily vandalized underpass uh, will have uh, a beautiful thematic mural that really will draw residents and visitors to our downtown core, which is the heartbeat of this city. We're a young organization with bold vision and a track record for implementation. And that's the key, right? Is like having a good idea is just a good idea, but a great idea is a good idea that is completely dropped through the implementation phase and delivered successfully. And that's like, that's what we do best. Two years old as an organization and what we've accomplished in the last two years is impressive and it's working. And so, so we have been in this infancy stage and we sort of skipped over a lot of steps just because we've grown up pretty quickly and we've gotten some funding to grow the vision. And I, I feel like we've just been thrown into elementary school as an adolescent. And our visions are like at the graduate level, like that's where we wanna be in this community. That's where we wanna take Bellingham. So the way we get there is by supporting these organizational efforts and, and showing up to events and, and helping make a donation to Paper Whale, like any small amount um, helps. To date, it's been a 100% volunteer effort. It's been more than two years of my life, but I wouldn't be doing anything else in this community. This is it, it's good. I've been in Bellingham 26 years and I have worked for a lot of nonprofits in this town from like a volunteer coordinator to a program manager to an executive director. I've worked in both the private sector and public sector and I swore I would never start a nonprofit. And then a director of a nonprofit gave me a piece of advice and he said, uh, Yes, we need more nonprofits. Like we need more businesses. We need more people that are doing good work in our community. And that really flipped the lens for me to think like, yeah, he's right. And a nonprofit is a business. It's a, a business that is values driven, I think. And a lot of local businesses here would say that they're values driven for sure. But we just put passion and purpose over profit. We'd love to have you uh, participate in our work. Come check us out at paper-whale.com and Instagram, all that stuff, we're there. You can hit us at Noisy Waters, you can hit us at Fire and Story. And super stoked to engage with you as this community grows.